What's up, guys? Matt Brown here for PlayPicks.com and TheLines.com. I'm going to talk to you about this Texans and Chiefs divisional playoff game. As always, please click that subscribe button down below. Give us a thumbs up on this thing and let us know in the comments how you plan on playing this game. What a game we do have, too. Really good offenses that are going to be going at it here. How do you think this thing is going to play out? Let's take a look here over at the lines on this one. This is over at DraftKings. Of course, we're recording this very early on Saturday morning. So this could be on the move, probably will be on the move one way or another by the time this thing kicks off. But we're sitting at nine and a half, 51 and a half over at DraftKings. FanDuel sitting at nine and a half, 51 flat. And then over at PointsBet, sitting at nine and a half, 51 and a half. So the hook is there at both of points bet and DraftKings and 51 flat over at FanDuel. So as always, guys, we've got the uh we've got the written up the written articles here on the lines and at play picks completely free. So head over there and you can take a look at how everybody thinks things are going to play out. I'll scroll down here so you can read along if you want to as we are going through this. Um, so you know, this opened at 10 actually was immediately bet to nine and a half in about three hours. It all the way went all the way down to nine in uh, about two hours after that, and then back up to nine and a half where you see it right now over at DraftKings. Opened at 49 this total, bet to 50 within about three hours, 50 and a half about a day later, and then 51 uh, about a day after that. And then here we are sitting at 51 and a half as uh, present right now. So you can see this thing just steady, steady, steady on the climb. As far as the weather concern, it's supposed to be nice, actually. Um, it was, you know, listen, it might snow on Saturday, but it looks like on Sunday, everything is supposed to be good. Again, check that weather forecast on Sunday. Things can get kind of crazy this time of year, as you know, but it uh, looks like everything's going to be okay. Texans 11 and six overall after that win last week, seven, eight and two against the spread. The Chiefs are 12 and four overall, 11 and five against the spread. These two teams did play in week six. The Texans actually pulled off a 31 to 24 win in this game. However, in that game, Texan, the, I mean, the Chiefs were missing two starting offensive linemen. They were missing Sammy Watkins and they were all, it was also Tyree Kill's first game back. If you guys remember, uh, Tyree Kill got hurt in week one of the NFL season. It was his first game back from injury from that week one injury. So just take that with a grain of salt. You know, they were down two starting linemen and two and their two best wide receivers were not getting full action. Watkins being out. And then uh, Tyreek Hill actually played the fewest amount of snaps of any of the wide receivers that were that were playing that day. Injuries for this game, the Texans, Will Fuller again, right? Everything revolves around Will Fuller. He is questionable. Said that hamstring is, quote, still bothering him. That said, he did practice in some capacity all week long. So the hope is that he will suit it up. Uh, the hope was also last week that he was going to suit it up. So again, you're going to watch, you're going to want to watch that really, really closely. Final injury reports have to be put out the inactive list 90 minutes before kickoff. Uh, Darren Fells, Kenny Stills, both questionable for the Texans as well. On the Chiefs side, Chris Jones, a good defensive lineman for them, actually got added to the injury report on Thursday. And so with that, um, you know, when there's a calf problem and you get added to the injury report on Thursday, that's never any good. So be sure and uh, take a look at that as well. All right, Texans on offense. I'll continue to scroll down here so you can read along. Averaging 23.6 points per game, averaged 362 yards per game. That came by way of 236 passing and 125 rushing. 5.7 yards per play for the Texans this year. Passed the ball 57.3% of the time. And with the way today's NFL works, passing 57.3% of the time actually makes them one of the more run-heavy teams in the league. They run the ball at the 10th highest rate, actually, of any team in the NFL. I know it sounds crazy because you don't think of this team as kind of one of those run-heavy teams, but 10th most when it comes to rushing percentage. Number 17th ranked offense overall by DVOA. DVOA gives them 15th ranked pass offense. Pro Football Focus grades that pass offense at number 14, number 6 graded pass blocking unit. Now, Laramie Tunsil didn't have the greatest game last week. No doubt about that. Deshaun Watson was running for his life. Tunsil got penalized a couple of different times, but he actually did grade out as the fifth best pass blocker in all of the NFL, according to Pro Football Focus. So, you know, if he can quit fall starting 
and all that. He is one of the very best guys that are out there. Of course, Will Fuller, we're trying to get Will Fuller out on the field. If he doesn't go, the weird thing about this is where they are, the state where they are at tight end right now with uh, Fells popping up in the middle of the week is questionable. They run a lot of 12 personnel whenever Will Fuller isn't out there. So um, we'll have to kind of monitor that and see how they, if Fells is not able to go, this could be really interesting as to how this offense is going to try and function. On the rush side of things for the Texans, 11th ranked rush offense, DVOA, number fourth graded rush offense by Pro Football Focus, 27th graded run blocking unit by Pro Football Focus, which is really, you know, really weird that they're so high in that rushing grade, but then the rush, rush blocking has been so bad. So that it lets you know, how good a season really and truly that Carlos Hyde and even Deshaun Watson for that matter, a lot of, you know, they do a lot of quarterback runs and stuff uh, had despite the the bad overall blocking from, from their offensive linemen on the run rush side of things, converting 43.5% of third downs. That is eighth in the league. So pretty good on third down this team uh, top 10 and red zone touchdown percentage 64.1% not settling for field goals. Very often is this Texans team That is actually seventh best in the entire NFL. Scoot down here a little bit if you want to read these by the numbers. Chiefs offense, 28.2 points per game, 379.2 yards per game. That is 281 passing and 98 rushing, 6.2 yards per play. Passing the ball 61.5% of the time. That is 10th most in the NFL. Number three ranked offense overall by DVOA. As you would imagine with that pass offense and Patrick Mahomes and all of those weapons, number two ranked pass offense, DVOA, number eighth graded pass offense by Pro Football Focus. So both of them in agreement here that this pass offense, one of the better ones in the entire NFL. Number ninth graded pass blocking unit. If you kind of really break this down, Mitchell Schwartz on that offensive line of theirs, number two rated uh, pass blocking tackle in the entire NFL by Pro Football Focus. Both of their guards are in the top 17 in grades, according to Pro Football Focus as well. So this offensive line has been really, really good keeping Patrick Mahomes upright. Um, On the rushing side of things, number 14th ranked rush offense, DVOA, 24th graded rush offense by Pro Football Focus and 23rd rated run blocking unit by Pro Football Focus. Now, if you remember, there was a time where this team in the middle of the season had absolutely no semblance of a run game really whatsoever. They were bringing back guys off the street. They were trying to make things work. A lot of those guys on IR now. It's uh, Damian Williams is back, however, so you you know that you do have this team a little bit more balanced with him out on the field. But he was just out so much; it was a patchwork backfield that they were trying to get going here, and uh, really shows here in the way Pro, Pro Football Focus rated this team. Converted forty seven point five percent of third downs. That is the best in the NFL. Forty seven point five percent of third downs. Nearly every other time they were faced with a third down, they converted. Unbelievable. Number one in the NFL. Red zone touchdown percentage, 54% though. So they settle for field goals a lot, which is really weird whenever you think about this offense. Like why were they able to not get in the end zone? You got that big ass uh, Travis Kelsey red zone threat out there. You got Tyreek Hill for all the, you know, Tyreek Hill, the other thing about him, he scores from outside of the red zone, right? So that his, all his touchdowns don't really count in this red zone touchdown percentage because Tyreek Hill's always taking it 40, 50, 60 yards. He's not scoring, you know, seven yard touchdowns. Things like that. Pace in this game, Kansas City plays the sixth fastest situation neutral pace. Houston, above league average, they're at 14th situation neutral. I'll flip over here to play picks. You can read what Nate has going in this one. What he thinks about everything. Texans defense allowed 24.1 points per game, 388 yards per game. That is 267 passing and 121 rushing. They give up 267 passing, one of the worst in the league. And now they come in with one of the very best pass offenses in all of the NFL in Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Number 26 rated defense DVOA overall, 26 rated pass defense DVOA, 22nd rated rush defense DVOA. Now, again, keep in mind a lot of these numbers, especially the rush defense number, uh, spent the majority of the season without J.J. Watt out there. J.J. Watt is back for the Texans now. So all of these are season-long numbers. You're going to have to factor in what you think J.J. Watt means to this team from a run-stopping perspective and even from a pass-rushing perspective. Number 24-rated defense overall by Pro Football Focus. They give them the number 20-rated pass rush and the number 24 gra- uh, coverage grade. So again, can't not really get into the passer 
and you're not covering all that well. That is not a recipe for success against this Chiefs team, you would think. As a whole, giving up 6.1 yards per play and opponents are converting 48.5% of their third downs. That is second worst in the league. So you have the very best team in the league at converting third downs against the second worst team in allowing third down conversions. I will continue to scroll here if you want to take a look. Chiefs allowing 19.2 points per game, 349 yards per game. That's 221 passing, 128 rushing. Number 14th ranked defense overall by DVOA. That is the 6th ranked pass defense and number 29th ranked rush defense DVOA. The number 25 rated defense overall by Pro Football Focus. That comes by way of the 29th graded pass rush and 18th coverage grade. So, Again, neither one of these teams generating much of a pass rush and the Chiefs actually way down at the very bottom. If you saw last week, Deshaun Watson was running running for his life against that Bills team. They were getting pressure on him left and right. Looks like that, you know, if the season long stats bear out here, it looks like he should have more time to throw this week against this Chiefs team that seems to get no pass rush if you look at the way that the entire season has played out here. So that's a big bonus for that Texans offense. As a whole, 5.4 yards per play this unit is giving up, and they allow 37.1% of third downs to get converted. So let's go ahead and take a look here at how we think that this thing is going to play out. So we got the hook. So let's make a case for the under over here at 51 in a half. A lot of this will have to do with whether Will Fuller suits up or not. The splits with Will Fuller on and off the field for this Texans offense is absolutely bonkers. You would not think that Will Fuller is the type of guy that would make such an incredible difference for an offense, but he actually does. I mean, Deshaun Watson's dropbacks with Will Fuller on and off the field this year is really really crazy and this was of course during the regular season but when he was on the field 337 plays 78.2 EPA expected points added off the field 247 plays negative 4.3 EPA that is what Will Fuller means to this offense and you can actually go back the last three seasons and the numbers bear out the same having that threat having that connection having whatever it is having Will Fuller out there has been just incredibly massive for Deshaun Watson it's been really really crazy the Texans passing success rate sits at 55.7 percent with him on the field this season compared to 52.8 percent when he is not on the field this season so again case for the under here Will Fuller doesn't play this offense does not function the same at all Another way you look at this is we were reading off as to the weaknesses of these defenses and both of these defenses, the bigger weakness. Now, the Texans have a are pretty leaky in the secondary, we'll give up some of the most yards and passing there is, but still their rush, their rush defense graded out even worse. And we definitely saw that the Chiefs rush defense graded out way, way worse than their pass defense. So if you're Bill O'Brien and the Texans, do you go out and do you actually try to run the ball a lot? and attack what is seeming to be the very biggest weakness of this defense, which is their run defense. If that's the case, we know what happens whenever you run the ball a ton, the clock keeps running and you score and you score at a much lower rate because there's not really a ton of explosive plays in the run game. So you take a look at how this could play out and it could Bill O'Brien try to just keep Patrick Mahomes and them on the sideline, play ball control here and try to win out a close game. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily the right way to go about it, but again, sometimes these coaches take different ways that they, that they think that these games could play out that would give them the best chance of winning. And again, maybe that's how they look at this game as well. The other way that this thing game could say under is uh, Bill O'Brien's actually a very conservative coach, right? I mean, we've seen this guy be in po- positive territory on multiple occasions over the course of this season and punt the ball, not go for not go for it on fourth down, not do any risky play calling on third and kind of long and stuff. So we've seen this guy play very conservative over the course of the season, not over the course of the season, but over the course of his career coaching this team. And that is yet again, another way that this game could stay under here. If we want to play the over, of course, we'll head over here to FanDuel because they don't have the hook yet. If we want to play the over on the over 51, I think it's, Really easy, right? Will Fuller does play in this game. 
We talked about how much better this offense is when Will Fuller does play. How about the fact that you have Patrick Mahomes coming to town in one of the most efficient and best offenses, especially from a passing perspective in the entire NFL this season? Oh, yeah. How about this guy, Nicole Hardman and Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey? These are guys that move the ball down the field in gigantic chunks and they can score quickly. And that's how we help with these overplays is quick, quick, quick. Also, let's not forget, it's not out of the realm of possibility either on the Chiefs side whenever you have guys like Nicole Hardman and Tyreek Hill and whatnot back returning kicks and punts and whatnot to see a special team score or at least help the special teams help put this offense in shorter field position where it takes you know not near as much time or near as many yards to score as well. And we've seen this time and time again this season as well too. So that's not crazy to say that this thing could help get to the over because of some special teams play as well so if you really do if you really want to look towards the over in this one you're just banking on talent and you're banking on these offenses here Um, look both of the defenses certainly have weaknesses and both of these defenses certainly can be passed on as well now easier to pass on the Chiefs team here lately over the middle than it is on the outside but I imagine the Texans will get creative in that aspect I mean we saw last week They wanted to get DeAndre Hopkins avoiding Trey White as much as humanly possible from the Bills. They moved him into the slot a ton. I imagine we will see some of that stuff happening for the Texans against the Chiefs as well. Make a so let's take a look here at the spread and what we think here about nine and a half. So um, full full on disclosure here for me in this one is when this thing hit nine, I made it part of a six and a half point teaser to get it under the, uh, to get it under the two and a half. And so, uh, through the field goal, I got it through the seven, through the three, got them as part of a six and a half point teaser. So now that we know where I stand right now, let's go ahead and say, if I had to play the number that's presented in front of us right now, I would still play the Chiefs side here. Um, I don't know if it will make my account. Maybe it'll make my account in some smaller fashion. But if I had to play, I would play on the Chiefs side here. This is, uh, you know, Andy Reid, an extra week to prepare. Much, much, I mean, listen, it's not often that we're talking about, like, you know, a massive coaching advantage for Andy Reid. But when it's up against Bill O'Brien, it's a massive coaching advantage for him against Bill O'Brien. Bill O'Brien has stumbled his way to where he's at right now. As you saw last week, they had to claw tooth and nail. Now, it's impressive they were able to come back and win, but really, that was more the Bills losing that game than it was the Texans winning that game. And they fell behind early. Now, think about this. What are they going to do if they fall behind to this Chiefs team, right? What are they going to do if they fall behind to Patrick Mahomes and this Chiefs team? They fell behind to the Bills team, and really there was no threat of the Bills just going absolutely crazy and running up the score. That was never on the table. It could go absolutely bonkers if the Chiefs... The thing that you're worried about here with this number, obviously, as always, is just some sort of back backdoor score. Garbage time when we get up numbers this high, especially if this thing were to reach double digits before kickoff, is, you know, you're up two touchdowns, you're up 24-10, and they get the ball back at the end of the game, and, you know, you kind of... You're not necessarily surrendering the, the touchdown, but you're certainly not playing like crazy, 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 and they just kind of chop, 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 chop the ball all the way down the field, and then they get that bum score and then try onside kick, they don't get it, and you win the game. But that busts our cover, right? So that's the only thing we're worried about in this type of situation, which is why I, have, I don't have it sit in my account at 9.5 right now. Um, I do have it as part of a teaser. If you wanted to play it as a 7-point teaser and get it under the 2.5, under the or even 6.5 just to get it to the flat 3 if you're okay with the kind of you know increasing that push equity for you, um, certainly don't hate that play. The real play for me, I have the under 51.5. I was waiting for this to get the hook all week when it kept climbing, kept climbing, kept climbing. And then it got to 51 and a half. Um, I hit the under. Listen, we talked about this whenever we were talking about the case for the under. The case of the under for me, Bill O'Brien leaves points on the field. Not only that, I don't think Will Fuller is going, if Will Fuller does play, he's certainly not going to be 100%. If we're talking about a true game time decision yet again, and him coming out and saying that the hamstring is still bothering him. And also, the occurrence for re-injury with these hamstring and soft tissue injuries is very, very high. I don't expect Will Fuller to play a full complement of snaps, even if he does decide to go in this game. This Texans offense does not function as well, near as well. The other thing that's gone under the radar is how well this Chiefs defense has actually started to play over the past five, six weeks of the season. 
They, it took them a long time to kind of gel, took them a long time to come together. But if you really look at the season long stats compared to the last month, month and a half stats, it's a very, very stark difference, a very big contrast as to how this Chiefs team plays, has been playing on defense the past month, month and a half of the season. Much, much better. Further, they're actually pretty hard to pass on on the perimeters. They actually play pretty good defense on the perimeter. So that kind of takes away that weapon as well. Now you got to move DeAndre Hopkins over into the slot, which doesn't free him up quite as much to, to do near as many things. And so and we saw this even last week with, with Trey White. I mean, he did finally get to his, his passing prop. But with that, it took until overtime to get there. Now, that being said, um, we should definitely talk some props here as well along the way. But, you know, let's take a look. And you, you just need to tell yourself a story here, how you think this game is going to go, right? I mean, Mahomes sitting at 299 and a half. You're talking about a team that averaged over 280 yards, uh, passing yards per game this year. And you're talking about a team that gave is, is so incredibly leaky in giving up passing yards here. Uh, does not surprise me to see this thing as high as it is, but also would not surprise me to see Patrick Mahomes get over that as well. As you can see, it's actually sitting at 297 over here at FanDuel. If you want to take advantage of that, you actually can get two extra yards if you want to play the over. Of course, you want to play the under, then um, you got that over here on DraftKings. Over on points bet, we can at least check out what the market is over here. It's sitting right between the two. So there you go. You have a you have a 297, a 298, and a 299 sitting out there. Now, they do have Watson sitting at 252. The uh, FanDuel sitting at 252 as well and 255 sitting over here at DraftKings. I think one of the things you can ask yourself, is there a chance this Texans team gets in a hole early? And if they get in a big hole early, do they have to abandon the run and then it just becomes throwing on every single down? If that is the story you want to tell yourself, we like to play these props, how do we think that the game is going to play out? If that is what the story that you are telling yourself, then we're going to hit this over 252 and a half because, hey, at the end of the day, no matter how good the Chiefs defense has been playing, if you're pl if you're facing you know 45 different pass attempts, if you're facing 46, 47, 48 pass attempts in a game, the likelihood of Deshaun Watson going over 252 is fairly high at that point. And then at that point, you also start to play some correlated plays as well because that at that point, Carlos Hyde has hit the sideline, right? Now it's Duke Johnson territory. So now Duke Johnson receiving yards at 27, becomes a pretty interesting play. You come down here to, to DraftKings, actually Duke Johnson sitting at 24 over here at DraftKings. So if you believe the team gets in a hole early, you think that they're going to have to pass a ton and you want to play Watson over passing yards, well, maybe you're looking at Hyde under rushing yards and you're looking at Duke Johnson over receiving yards because that's how everything is going to shift and play out, right? Duke Johnson comes in, he's now the pass catching back, That is, and that finds Carlos Hyde on the sideline. If he's on the sideline, he's not running the ball. So tell yourself a story, play your props, and according to that story, I don't mind that story that I just told right there in the least bit, to be perfectly honest. I think a fairly decent chance that that story could, in fact, play out in this game. But as I said, look, if I had to play the spread, I'd take the Chiefs at nine and a half. Do have them already in the account as part of a teaser. Wouldn't I certainly do not hate that as well. Definitely think they win this game for sure. Think that they win this game. If you want to play them as part of like a money line parlay or something like that, money line parlay with whoever you think is going to win the late game uh, on Sunday or even the late game on Saturday. If you're catching this video uh, early, don't don't hate that as well. Definitely think that they win this game. But really, my play in this game has been the under. I was waiting, waiting, waiting for the hook to get on there from the 51. 51 being one of those key numbers when it comes to totals. We've you know kind of run through this before: 37, 41, 44, 47. Now 51. Um, so getting that hook there. Now you're looking at 31, 20 score still stays under. 27, 24 score still stays under. Um, so. Really like me some under 51 and a half and uh, kind of looking for this thing to be a little bit more ball control towards the end than, uh, than maybe people think. And honestly, don't know if the Texans are going to be able to do their part to get this thing over 51 and a half as it is. Guys, as always, hopefully this information helped you lean you one way. You don't have to blindly tail me. Hopefully the information that I said across the course of this video helped you with the video, with the uh, with the bet you wanted to make anyway. Right. With the way that you wanted to go about this. So. Um, as always, please uh, go ahead and like this video. Let us know in the comments how you want to play this thing. Subscribe to the channel. 
Be sure and do that as well. Everything we do is absolutely free. So please do that and uh, let us know in, in the comments below what you think the actual score is going to be. Texan 77, Chiefs 78, whatever you think that that might be. If, uh, if you get it exactly right, we'll ship you an Amazon gift card as our thanks for you watching this video and being a part of everything we do. We'll be back for the late Sunday game.